So I'm going to talk about uh, holistic development and operations environments. And it's not a technical talk about holistic DevOps. That is, the DevOps is there in the core, but it's kind of starting to think about uh, DevOps and how it's kind of holistic approach of things and, and then working upwards from there and bringing new things, everything that's surrounding DevOps and surrounding the software development and it just grew out from there, sorry. So my name is Janne Koponen. I work as a IT operations manager in Wunder based on Helsinki. And as a operations manager, it's a great position to be because there you can help all our different people working on different disciplines. So it's not just uh, technical stuff, but also helping people and enabling the people to do their job. So helping people to help them, our customers or each other and empowering that work. So I said that it's not about DevOps, but development and operations uh, in general. So let's go through those those terms because it's kind of nice that they are not so simple and they don't have just one meaning. So as a holistic, it's a practice that you don't focus on the details, but you see the whole and you see the value. There is a lot of value added to the parts. It's not just the sum of the parts. And as a developer, it's not just the code. There is self-development. There is the team development, company development, community development, a lot of things that can be put under the development term. The same goes with the operations, it's not just sysops, there's the business management and whatever. And environments, not just servers, local environments, but actually the people you work with, the community you live in, your family, Drupal community, the whole society. So this all connects together, come together, work together, and there is a lot of added value in between those different places. So what are the benefits of kind of having that kind of thinking that you don't focus on the details, but you see the whole picture? So then you can see a lot of improvement possibilities, not only what you do, but how you can actually help others understand what you do, how others can benefit from what you do and making things easier for everybody. And about the improvements, there is like, you can focus on small things, but when you put them together, you get great success. So in 2010, Brits were kind of, we haven't won any Tour de France ever, and we need to change this. And this guy, Dave Bracefold, was appointed as the chief coach of the British cycling team. And he came with this idea that if they focus on improving everything that there is related to the cycling, and it wasn't just about better bikes, better training schedules, but it also includes like a bit of better pillows for the cyclists. So they get a bit, a bit better night's sleep and they are well rested, better drinking bottles, better everything. So small improvements. And he promised that if they follow this in five years, they will have a British Tour de France winner. Well, actually he was wrong. It only took three years with this method. So the small things, you improve everywhere when you think the whole, all put together, can, can really improve the performance and everything. So just improving something by one person. One person is so small thing that it doesn't take much to improve. And of course you can take that it doesn't matter that much, that it's not worth doing. But of course one person is actually quite a huge amount if you factor in all the improvements. You do a lot of those one percent improvements here and there and different kind of different parts of the system. So you get nice interesting that you're, you're investing. So 
over one year if you keep up improving 1% every day, you end up with 37 times the original value. So it's huge. It's actually trying to do that 1% per day is impossible, even if it sounds like it's so small. So even 1% per week, you end up with 67% increase over the year. So small streams, big river. Of course, with the small changes, it's hard to see the change because it's small, it accumulates all over time. So there needs to be some way of measuring that change. So it's important to keep an eye what's happening, looking back where we were, where are we heading, and having some actual data. So you know that you are actually doing the correct thing. And by that, it's important to see the feedback, what's happening, what is the outcome of it, and getting those measurements, feedback, collecting all the things you can, and making, making decisions based on actual facts. And of course, not always everything comes together. They don't work. But with those small improvements, it's also easy to go back. Sometimes the change is not an improvement. But with more changes, it's easy to come back. Like it was nice to hear Dreyas talk about the Drupal UX improvements, that we need some new modern JavaScript-based framework for the UX, for the admin side. And he said that we are not going to do it like trust the old one and replace with the new one. But we start with the, some small part of it. We test it and, and see how it goes and so on. And then if it works, it can be extended to cover more of the admin side of the Drupal. And Toyota is really good at it. They, they have this Kaizen philosophy of constant improvement, and they have a really good system of collecting the, all the improvement ideas the employers have. And if you think that one million improvements, they are quite small because there are so many, but what's more astonishing is that 90% of those improvement ideas get implemented. So if you have the system in place, you can collect the ideas, you can actually implement them, and of course then afterwards measure them. Well, Toyota is still one of the leading auto manufacturers in the world. So it takes a lot of work, but it's small, it's worth doing, and it, it comes in and it starts rolling. You do more small improvements, and it's not only, only for that, but then it's multi multiplying. You get easier, like improving the process of actually improving. You get easier improvements, easier idea submissions, and everything like that. So instead of like setting some goal that we need to improve 10% this year, you just keep improving indefinitely, and you you will get quite far with that. And there is only also a problem with if you set a goal, you may or may not reach it, but when you reach it, then you are like happy that, okay, we did it, but what next? Then you kind of settle to that level and, and I don't know, so there is many things where you can improve, a lot of different areas. But the idea is that with holistic ideas that you don't improve in your own silo. You tear down the walls and work together with other, other people, other departments. Like DevOps is one of the disciplines that brings together developers and the operations people. So it's good like working together instead of there might be that it's not the correct way of doing like there is the developers and then there's the operations and you put the DevOps like another silo between them and then there's like instead of one communication interface you have two and and things get harder to pass forward and then also DevOps need to know both sides but when the developers and operators actually work together, 
and do those improvements together, there are actually the people that know the both sides and they can actually focus on that and, and you can eliminate that one silo in between. Integrating all the things, of course, in the technical perspective, it's kind of easy. You just make all the systems work together in a nice way, but also integrating people across different areas and making them work together. So what we have done, we have like, of course, it's, it's hard to like sales goes out and sell something and then they come to the developers and do this and then it's like, that's not possible. But when they are sitting in the same table thinking about what we are going to sell, it's a lot easier to have the dialogue there and actually offer something that you can deliver. And there are small things too like these slides and this presentation I did it together with like I have people reading through my texts and I have uh, have these slides. I had really crappy images and graphics. And then I went to our designers and I said, hey, this is something that I want. So just don't look at the pictures, but make them pretty. Find something nicer. And I, I kind of liked the outcome. But there was one detail. I don't know if you noticed there was a, the code slide. Did anyone notice something wrong with that? If I, if I go back. This one. So it's nice slide about code. That's actually WordPress code. So it's, it's okay, but it, it was kind of funny that I had a clear idea that I want some code and it was clear me I didn't even think about telling the designer that it needs to be Drupal code and he just went out and searched the image banks for nice pictures of code and came with that and then I see it and okay it looks nice but wait there's the VP. <laughs> so I was kind of talking the same language it's, it's hard sometimes between the different people and, and they don't think the same way as you do and you need to be clear of what you want. But then again, it's, it's all the details that matters and, and I kind of then talked about it and then like, this is a good example of how we can improve the communication and how we can think about what's clear to us might not be clear to others. And there is always something that we assume that others know automatically because we know it. So we need to provide all the details And automation, of course, that too is not only about the technical part. It's easy to do the technical part of the automation, but also automating like the people workflow. So it comes automatically to people that if they have a problem, they don't stay there alone and try to fix it, but they can automatically go outside and, and search for help. That's kind of the behavioral thing. But the technical examples, there's lots of those things that you can integrate. The people part is a lot harder. You need to educate people and you need to be present and available for them to notice that they can actually do that kind of stuff. You probably want something more technical. So we have these wonder tools that we have been building and it's, I don't know, I don't go the details about the technology and it's open source and in the GitHub you can find it there. But the philosophy that we have tried to build into the system is that it's kind of covering everything that is there like trying to get the tickets from your ticketing system into the production everything that is technical and process in between. And the tools, of course, there is the technical tools that take care of many parts of it, like provisioning and, and deployment and local environments and everything like that. But there's also the actual development of these development tools and uh, usage of this. So it's not like this is the operations tool that 
we use to put the code in production, but actually empowering developers to use the tool and they can actually do some like system configuration changes to the servers. And also making it easy to actually contribute back. So of course there's always always a way of submitting a ticket that we need this and that new feature or this is not working, but actually they are also capable of actually fixing them, the issues themselves, or creating a new features for them. And by doing that, it's also important that those improvements and changes are spread across all the projects that are using our tools. So we get the improvement, small improvement, and it multiplies by all our projects. So it's kind of Swiss army knife, but instead of like those tools that tend to kind of do everything, it's usually they do everything, but not the best way of doing it. But we have tried to follow the Unix philosophy of, so it's not like trying to cram everything together, but just having this framework where you have a best tool for the job and they just work together nicely. So it's like one tool takes the input, then puts the output and the next tool can use it. And same should be in the people process tools that, like I said, talking to the same language, there's different terminology, terminology, so understanding what others are saying and when the project is moving, for example, from sales to developers to DevOps to maintenance, so the actual people understand what they are receiving, what they are putting forward in that. And of course, most important thing is the documentation. There is never too much documentation unless you end up with something like that. But it's also important that the documentation is there and you can also improve that in every level. And like not writing all the documentation from the technical perspective that there needs to be like other people need to understand it too. So it's not just for us, but also others. So in general, if you kind of step backward and see everything that is going around and you do your best thing, but you make sure that your thing is not made on isolation, but it's connected to everything else around you. You see a lot of new improvement opportunities. You can make the thing work much better. And if you focus on the change, the process of change, instead of like setting goals, you can like estimate that we are heading this way. And then after some time, we should be reaching some level. But it's not like the end goal, but you just keep going and, and keep even improving and improving the improvement. And really those small changes are worth doing. If you just do them a lot. So, questions? Where can people find that Wunder tools that you talked about? Yeah, it's in the GitHub repository. It's just Google Wunder tools. It should be the first result of it's under the Wunder.io organization. And it's open for everyone, and, and contributors are also welcome. The, the Toyota one million ideas in a year. Is that somewhere available, or did they share? How do they get these ideas? And it kind of sounded interesting to get some kind of a process. To yeah. Ideas and well, basically, it's the basis of everything in Agile. So it's the Agile process that they have somewhere around 50s, kind of with the lean manufacturing and everything like that. So maybe, maybe they have a, they have. Lots of material about that. Yeah. 
anything. Remember to share your improvements, small improvements, matter. Let's do it together, a lot of those, and join the contribution sprints. Well, thank you, and as I also want to improve myself, I would really appreciate any feedback. You can use that, that or find the session on the GON website. Thank you.